Learning to be a doctor is an undertaking of enormous and life-changing magnitude. In traditional medical education, countless hours are spent in fact-filled lectures before students can move on in years three and four to diagnose disease and work with patients. But even with outstanding teachers, is that the best way for students to learn to be doctors? Doctors Russell Greisbeck, Paul Kruger, and James White worked to identify how future doctors learn best, along with numerous faculty who volunteered their time and second and third year medical students who provided invaluable insights into how future doctors learn best. The result? Techniques like case-based learning and clinical presentations were integrated earlier into basic science and clinical education. This engages students earlier and starts them thinking like doctors. And the new SOM curriculum is built upon the seven competencies of the American Osteopathic Association. For Drs. Greisbach, Kruger, and White, the time was right to move the curriculum from primarily lecture-based classes to more interactive and patient-centered learning. As many as 5.3 million Americans and 35 million people worldwide are living with Alzheimer's disease, a devastating neurodegenerative illness. Discovering an accurate, relatively non-invasive, and inexpensive diagnostic test for this disease is a pressing need. Bob Nagel, a longtime professor at the UMDNJ School of Osteopathic Medicine, and his team of medical and graduate students appear to have done just that. The test detects 10 antibodies in a single drop of blood that indicate the presence of Alzheimer's disease. The drop of blood is applied to a slide containing the protein targets of the antibodies. If the antibodies are in the blood sample, the targets glow green, indicating the presence of the disease. The final results are 95% accurate and ready within 24 hours. In the team's model of Alzheimer's disease, autoantibodies and amyloid beta peptides are abundant in everyone's blood. The blood-brain barrier normally prevents them from getting into the brain and wreaking havoc. But in those with defects in the blood-brain barrier, usually older individuals or people with head trauma, these autoantibodies and peptides can readily leak through the blood-brain barrier and enter the brain. Once inside, they selectively bind to certain neurons, especially those that are critical to memory and higher thinking, and thus trigger the disease. Eventually, these neurons will die, and our immune system responds to the debris generated by their death by producing new autoantibodies, which the test can detect and use to diagnose the disease. These disease processes will begin long before an individual will exhibit telltale symptoms and thus allow diagnosis well before the individual becomes symptomatic. The team is finding that the same diagnostic method works even more accurately for Parkinson's disease, and they are beginning to look at multiple sclerosis and autism. As Dr. Nagel has put it, we may have discovered a strategy for the diagnostics of a great many diseases. I was rear-ended while stuck in a traffic jam, and I have a lower back injury as well as um, neck injury. So I had a great deal of knee pain. Horrendous pain. And that led me to a little bit of depression. Wanted my husband to shoot me. It was so bad. My doctor had recommended surgery. So I tried physical therapy. Cortisone injections. Managing the pain with medications. Acupuncture and acupressure. Nothing was actually making me improve. These were my alternatives and that there, was, that there were no other alternatives. And so he introduced me to Dr. Cooley. I eventually, after 26 doctors, made my way to Dr. German. I had come to Dr. Survey. What do Dr. Survey, Cooley, and German have in common? They are all members of UMDNJ SOM's Neuromusculoskeletal Institute with Dr. German as its director. Using an interprofessional approach, the list of conditions treated and the services available at the NMI are extensive. In addition to chronic pain, patients with back pain, nerve injuries of any sort, multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, wound care, traumatic head injury, gait dysfunction, headaches, balance disorders, 
post-stroke syndrome, and spinal cord injury can find help. Treatment options include medical pain management, osteopathic manipulative medicine, Botox injections, surgery, and acupuncture. While the goal of medicine is often to prolong life, the NMI's mission is to give purpose to life and to restore function to patients regardless of the condition that affects them. It's given me my life back, actually. I can now sit up for maybe four hours a day as opposed to 15 minutes. It lets me live my life. I think it's more than an alternative. I think that it's better medicine. Camden is a city of challenges. 44% of the city's population lives in poverty, the highest in the nation. 10 to 12 year olds can look ahead to a threefold increase in juvenile arrests by the time they turn 13, a prime time to become runners for the drug dealers. But an emphasis on primary care and caring for the whole person is part of the osteopathic philosophy and students at UMDNJ School of Osteopathic Medicine take that to heart. In 2003, the Camden Community Health Center, run by SOM student volunteers, opened for Saturday hours. Today, student volunteers from each class and one or two physician volunteers busily move between three examination rooms to treat more than a dozen patients who arrive at the clinic from Camden and the surrounding communities. Most patients come to the clinic for physicals or a variety of acute illnesses, but a growing number come back for continuing care of chronic diseases such as hypertension and diabetes. The Camden Community Health Center has become a fixture in the community. Medical students Ferhad Madurai and Hun Hong put their heads and their passions together and Project REACH, Revitalizing Education and Advancing Camden's Health, was created. Their target would be the youth of Camden. With Camden Middle School students as project leaders and the UMDNJ students as the team members, REACH has sponsored several projects, including the cleanup of a neighborhood vacant lot frequented by drug users. Madurai and Hong believe that physicians have powerful voices that should be raised to combat social injustice and advocate for the underserved. For 35 years, it has been the gem of South Jersey. The University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey's School of Osteopathic Medicine.